the laptop program has brought advantages to my classroom because kids have got their own computer. And for us doing digital art, um, there's, there's masses of resources which kids can not only collect, but also produce themselves. And having it on their own computer is one, it, it stops us having any glitches because on a class-based computer where kids are on and off, that sort of um, storing all their resources and their photos and their uh, layers of things they've downloaded off the internet is, is just really hard to manage. Whereas on their own computer, it can be there, it can be current. They can uh, um, access it in class in a format that they've um, set up for themselves. But uh, also, uh, kids have got access to the software we're using at home. So I teach things to kids in class about quite sophisticated uh, creative with sophisticated yeah, I'm going to start again okay kids have got access to the software at home so uh, the sophisticated um, procedures that we teach them in class they can go home and practice or they can go home and advance on them um, when we're teaching kids Photoshop stuff uh, it's, it's hard for them to really get a good understanding of it in 30 minutes 40 minutes 50 minutes if they can go home and keep working on things uh, work out perhaps what they're good at or what problems they've got and come back the next day and get more input the, the layers of sort of understanding they get is just richer and richer. The current year nine kids, as far as their Photoshop skills, I, I would say it's sort of doubled last year's because they can go home and work on it. They can go home and um, practice the things that we're actually doing in class. And for creative stuff, that's important. It's hard to be really good at creative stuff if you're just using it for 40 minutes here and there and you're kind of just using it in sort of limited amounts. Kids can actually go home and use the skills we teach them in class to not only use on their own photos or to use on designs they've got to do for their parents, but they can also go home and um, use it in a fun way as well. So because, because this creative stuff we teach them is so fun, it's all you know, designing and getting stuff off the internet and laying pictures on top of each other. The kids want to do it and they, they take the computer home and use it in that way. And uh, it just means the current kids are more skilled than with these creative tools than the kids I've seen in the past. And another thing as well, not just in digital art, but in visual art, um, I can give kids a written assessment to do where they have to analyze a picture and every kid's got a color picture of that, um, that artwork in front of them as they actually work on it. And uh, so when they go home, they've got a color picture, they can actually zoom in on, par on parts of it and analyze it. So even in visual art, it works far better as well. And in visual art, we're constantly telling kids to research imagery. If a kid wants to know how to draw a guitar, find a picture of a guitar, if a kid wants to, um, look at artists who use um, grids in their artwork for example they can go off with the computer and find 20 or so of them and uh, another thing is the way kids actually get to submit work now we're producing so much electronic digitally based stuff which is a part of what's happening in the real world and kids don't have to actually um, hand in bits of paper they can submit things electronically we set up blogs for the whole class and kids can progressively update the work they do. They can um, submit the research they're doing, they can submit the written stuff, they can um, produce artworks that are a sort of practice and experimental progress work and submit that as well. And I can see it constantly. The other good thing about that is um, I get to actually make sure every single kid is up to date. Uh, there, isn't, there isn't a lag with kids being able to only have class time to upload their work. They can go home and upload it and therefore I can set really specific and uh, exact due dates where certain amounts of work needs to be done. So for art and creative stuff with so much time involved, it's all about time management. So I can tell kids this is due this date, this is due this date, and we can keep, I can keep every kid in the class up to date and I can actually see who's behind. I can uh, contact parents and tell them if a certain kid hasn't got a certain amount done. So it's like constantly being able to see their creative process while they're working on it, which is a great tool. So give me some examples of where the computer has enhanced teaching and learning in your area that without a computer it didn't, it couldn't do. Something you couldn't uh, do without a computer that you are doing now where teaching and learning is just being enhanced greatly. Well, without a, without a computer, the whole subject digital art couldn't run. It's based on the fact that the students have access to computers so that we have software like, such as Photoshop that they can creatively manipulate. Um, images. Also, um, obviously in a digital age when kids are using creative tools like the camera, they're taking photos, putting on their computer. But also we do whole units of work where kids need to re um, access resources from the internet. Like in 
2011 designing isn't drawing it's going onto the internet and finding the kind of font you want if you want a font that looks like an old typewriter you go on you find that if you want to find old looking paper you go on and find that if you want to find a picture of a, a guitarist you po you find those things and you layer them together and we're teaching kids to be able to do that that's the sort of current form of art making in you know in this generation in this day and age and uh, kids with computers can do that they can be current in the creative tools they have so we're not completely abandoning traditional stuff, but we're finding a way to marry them. So kids who are, um, I don't know, suited towards technologies, kids who are suited towards um, computers creatively can use those, but also kids who are more traditional based, they can um, use them with computers. Like for example, our whole year 10 unit we do is based on kids being able to use traditional skills and computers at the same time. They draw, they scan in, they manipulate, they print out, they redraw, they scan back in, and there's a whole relationship between traditional and uh, computers as well. So you've used an iPad before as a teacher? Yes, I have an iPad as well as a teacher. Yeah. And how have you used it? Well, I use it, I use it mainly for um, quick researching of the internet as far as artists goes. Like uh, I, um, I'm, I have apps for certain sites like StumbleUpon and, and other art sites where I can just click and um, if a kid asks me, um, for input into a particular type of artwork. I can start searching the internet for a particular kind of artists quickly when I, with an iPad. I can also have readily accessible to me things like um, handbooks for certain cameras. We've got three different types of cameras in the art room. So I can have apps which have like their manuals and things, so that's handy. Um, so what can kids do with a computer they couldn't do with an iPad? Well, an iPad for us is just a research tool. It's, it's, it's helping kids to develop their own sense of style. For example, one thing we do in art is we tell them they need to research to develop a personal aesthetic research to know what looks good. So they do that with an iPad, but they can't really produce anything in, with an iPad. We need a computer that can actually pull things off the internet, rework them, pull things off the internet, but also take things they've used themselves like drawings or photographs and work them together, redesign them, manipulate them. We can't do that with an iPad. We need the uh, software that comes with an iPad. We need the story, sorry, that comes with we need the software that comes with a, a laptop. We need the, the um, storage facilities. We need the power of the processor. We need um, the, the accessibility to be able to manipulate actual imagery and stuff. Well, we couldn't do that with an iPad. It's, it, the iPad's a great research tool, but not a, a production of art tool for us.